Hello everyone! Welcome back! Today I'm working on a new piece in my sketchbook and I'm excited to be working mainly on this gorgeous old oak tree. I love trees. I know a lot of people do. I'm not special in that I love oak trees and trees in general, but I do have such a soft spot for them. I'm going to be doing more trees. That's how much fun it was. Um, this is entitled Will of the Wisp, but the wisp comes at the end of the video. Um, so it was kind of an afterthought. I wasn't even sure what I was, where I was going with this tree, but it certainly looked like, um, a fairy tree of some kind. It, uh, it's a reference photo from Realms and Enchant- Realms and Enchantment on Instagram. They always have like these fairy oriented photographs that they put in my feed and it's just pretty, pretty stuff. Uh, nice and moody fantasy type photographs. They're really nice. Uh, let's see. This video, by the way, is sped up to about four times normal speed so if it looks like I'm I've had too much coffee that's why um <laughs> I'm actually I think I draw and paint pretty slow <laughs> there's going to be a couple sections where it's not sped up you'll be able to see those and uh well I don't know maybe it's just my perception of myself I don't know but I really feel like when I'm watching these videos and editing them I'm like wow I really need to speed this up <laughs> but these things take a long time so if you're new to drawing and you're just enjoying watching somebody else draw in their sketchbook don't feel disheartened it does take me a long time to draw these and, and render them out uh, let's see just sketching off all the branches I follow um, the photo references. I follow them pretty carefully, but I do alter them quite a bit. This tree had a ton of branches uh, to the point there. I think some of them might have even been like photoshopped in, if that makes any sense. Um, there was just so many branches, but trees, of course, do have a lot of branches, so it makes sense. So I omitted quite a few of them and um, it, it had to be done I also stylized it a little bit I have been um, watching Lowish if you don't know who she is by all means please find her anywhere you can she is she she doesn't have a YouTube channel per se I'm a Patreon on her pay on her Patreon page. I'm a patron on her Patreon page. It's kind of a tongue twister. And um, she's uh, very talented and she's extremely stylized. And she was even talking recently about something that I've been struggling with in the sketchbook. And that's um, getting away from realism and getting more into a style stylization. I feel like I have a style already, but it's really embedded in realism. And I've been on a mission to explore that and to kind of change it a little bit. I, I, I kind of want to have more style, stylization to my artwork. I can do photorealism. I, I can do realism actually quite well. I'm very proud and happy. <laughs> that I, you know, mastered it to a certain degree. It is a, it's a struggle when I do it. It's, it's difficult. It does take time, but I really enjoy it. And I've had some, the pleasure of doing some amazing paintings in realism and will continue to do so. But I also have this calling in my head to do more fantasy projects to do more of a mood more of storytelling and I know you can do storytelling with realism I just there's there's just something that's been changing me a little bit in the past couple years 
um, and more so in the past year. And uh, I actually had somebody ask me if I could do a portrait of um, their baby the other day. And I was just like, you know, I'm just not doing that right now. <laughs> and it, it, at first it felt weird to say it because, you know, to turn down work as an artist is kind of weird. Um, so many people, you know, want to make money at art. So it's... I, I feel like I used to think that it was like, oh, I'm looking a gift horse in the mouth if I don't take every single commission that comes down the pipe. But I've learned to also listen to what I'm doing now and listen to what my heart really tells me because my art and my heart are really intertwined. And um, so I, I just... When I, after I told her that, I was very, you know, real nice and gentle about it and just explained to her kind of where my head was at, which was probably TMI for her, but uh, she, she seemed to understand perfectly, and most people do, um, they, they believe that what artists do is kind of magic smoke and mirrors anyway, so <laughs> they're more than happy usually to just let you explain your eccentricity as an artist and they just nod and smile oh yeah okay <laughs> but uh, I feel like she understood me and I was just you know just telling her I'm just not doing commissions right now um, take take some good pictures of her when she grows up into her skin a little she's a newborn she's literally a few weeks old and I, I would you know I could paint a newborn but do you really want to see all the little wrinkles and red splotches <laughs> That are on your child. Give her a few, give her at least a few months to grow into her skin, right? But um, that's my opinion. Newborns are adorable. I love them all. But uh, I've, I've often had people commission me and then when I paint what they, or draw what they, what I see, they have something to, something to say about it. You know, it's just a little different for them. They see something different or they didn't see that. Their, you know, loved one has one eye lower than the other, or their ears are really big, or their nose is really big. <laughs> I actually um, have a very hard, hard time laughing because if my parents are watching this, they know me very well, and I have a very difficult time drawing people that I know well because I don't see their imperfections because I see them through the lenses of, you know, I love this person. And they're perfect to me. And there's nothing wrong with them. And then when I go to draw them, I'm like, there's no way their nose is that crooked. There's just no way. So I'm like, checking the proportions and checking the proportions. <laughs> I'm like, my God, their nose is huge. And I can't tell them. And I can't, I don't know. Sometimes I have a hard time drawing real for real stuff just because of that. Um, I've been kind of getting over it. <laughs> it, uh... It reminds me of um, days gone by when artists used to paint for royalty. Can you imagine how difficult that might have been for them to walk that line? Uh, making flattering portraits. Making them semi-accurate. Like, how accurate does Henry VIII want to be painted? <laughs> uh, anyway. I'm off on a tangent. So yeah, so realism, I love it. It's wonderful. And I'm kind of over it a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> At least photorealism. Uh, here I am I'm just like babbling. And uh, yeah, I've never done a watercolor swatch ever. These little pan watercolors that I bought. And I'm like, I should probably know what these colors look like because you really can't tell. And some of them, I think, are identical to each other. I think they gave me, like, two of some of them. Like, those blacks, the blackish grays on the top, and the two greens. Um, one of them is a little more piney, but those two on the left, green, they're, they're absolutely look identical. The two blues that I just put down before that purple looks the same. So, anyway, I made a swatch, and I filmed it because I always like it when people swatch their colors for some reason. I have no idea what the names of these are. It's kind of a cheap set. 
Um, I got it from a box store. It's their name brand. They seem to work fine. Um, you know, for what I'm using them for. I have no idea if they're light fast, anything of that nature, so. But I do enjoy looking at the pretty colors. And now I have this nice, I cut that out of my sketchbook and put it in the palette. So now I can refer to it. So helpful. I've seen so many people do that and have no idea why I never did it, but now I did it. So <laughs> I'm off the hook. I've done the thing. It's pretty fun, actually. I still love the oranges and the browns. I think I might actually get, um, I have some inks and I want to try ink watercolor as well, which doesn't really make sense, but like watering ink down and coloring with it. Uh, anyway, um, and I want to get some earth tones because right now all I have is, uh, the primary colors, which I, when I paint in acrylics, I only use primary colors unless I have a lot of one color that I just need a whole tube of because it's just going to take a whole tube or two of my other colors. But I, I'm, I, uh, I don't know where I got that practice from. I think it comes from my school days and that's the white watercolor. They gave me two pads of white watercolor and that's me showing you that they go on the black. It goes on the black, pretty opaque. You know, I can do some stuff with it with skin tones. So that white's pretty handy. Up in the top, I put M's right there. Those are all metallics. They gave me a selection of metallics. I'm showing you the shimmer. It's not very shimmery, but in this light, but it's very pretty. I've used the blue on some things before. Um, what was I talking about? That's a shame. <laughs> that thought is, that thought has escaped me. Oh, primary colors. I think it stems from my high school teacher. I think she probably only like gave us palettes with red, yellow, blue, white, and black. Go for it. And actually, she probably didn't give us black now that I think about it because you can mix black. And so I don't know, maybe she, it was thrifty. It was definitely, a, it was a Georgia public high school. So maybe she was being very thrifty. That's a possibility. Uh, <laughs> But um, I learned how to mix all my colors from primary colors. And it's my habit. I like to do that. I don't like to buy. I've bought di dioxazine purple. Purple is the one thing that I can't get to be pretty. <laughs> I can mix a purple that I can shade with from red and blue. I'm pretty sure it has to do with my paint pigments not being pure. But um if you have pure pigment, it's probably a little bit prettier. But my purple always ends up being kind of a grayish purple. So I bought, I broke down and bought some dioxazine purple for shading. And I love it. So that's one of the tertiary colors. But I never, I bought a green. I never use it. I never buy orange. And it just makes everything from there. So I'm quite, quite overwhelmed with all those color choices on that watercolor palette. <laughs> it's kind of fun. It's me soaking up some of the, this uh, paper is not watercolor paper. This is a mixed media sketchbook. So that is, that's, that was some drying time there. It took a long time for all that water to dry. <laughs> And this clip, it came out a little bit warm. You can see my hands like kind of blown out yellow a little bit. So, and I couldn't figure out how to adjust the color balance properly. Still working on the video editing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, Be getting the branches down, grays into browns.
I like watercolor. It's fun. This paper buckled like crazy, but um, it handled it pretty good for a mixed media pad. I didn't tape it down, obviously. That was my fault. If I'd taped it down, it probably would have behaved a lot better. But uh, I noticed in the video you really can't see most of the buckling, so it did okay. There's a lot of green in this tree. He had a lot of uh, moss growing on him. He was an old fella. An old, old oak tree. He's one of those oak trees that has the limbs that kind of go down and actually touch the ground. And I used to live in Florida for quite some time and when I was younger. And they have trees like that all over the place. Savannah does too. Savannah, Georgia has beautiful, beautiful oak trees. I can't remember what breed of oak tree it is that does that. They don't all do that with the branches that come down so far. You can actually just climb up on them and sit on them. It's really beautiful. They're called Southern Live Oaks. I went and looked them up. I hope you enjoyed your music break. Uh, I figured I might try a little bit of both. So you don't have to listen to me talking the whole 30 minutes. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> what you prefer. Or if you like both. Uh, here I'm just adding some texture to all these branches. They're nice and twisted. They're not, some of them are twisted, but most of them are just, just the texture of the bark. Yeah, it's a very interesting growth. One of the artists I would like to, um, talk about for just a second, because the mood of this painting reminds me of him not that it's anything like his work but it's a little bit like it because he did lots of sketches and watercolors his name is Brian Froud F-R-O-U-D he made a fairies book and uh, me and my mother loved that thing we looked through that thing we still have copies of it um, we even upgraded to like special editions and stuff. His artwork in it is just phenomenal. So if you ever get a chance to look at Brian Froud's artwork, please do so. 
Here I'm adding green, green gray. There I'm taking away where the will of the wisp will be. I've been watching some watercolor videos. Of course, I'm not using watercolor paper. So as you can see, the paper deteriorates when it's not watercolor paper. Um, I do have some nice watercolor paper. I'll probably pull some out. I think it's arches and we'll work on that at some point in the future. So this is the time where I get to use my imagination. Work on feathering out the light. A will of the wisp is a um, forest sprite of some kind. <laughs> Uh, they were in the movie Brave by Disney, and um, I when I saw them, I was just so happy, <laughs> because you don't really see them very often, in, in a modern fairy tale. I'm looking up Will-o'-the-Wisp, see what it says, exactly what it is. Will-o'-the-Wisp... Is an atmospheric ghost light seen by travelers at night. Especially over bogs, swamps, or marshes, the phenomenon is known in English folk belief, English folklore, and much of European folklore. Uh, it goes by names like Jack o' Lantern. That's interesting that that was their name. Friar's Lantern, a Hinky Punk. It's said to mislead travelers by resembling a flickering lamp or lantern. In literature, Will o' the Wisp metaphorically refers to a hope or goal that leads one on but is impossible to reach or something one finds sinister and weird. Huh. That's cool. Wikipedia. I think I read somewhere that they lead travelers astray. So that kind of goes along with that. But in Brave, they were actually leading her to where she needed to go. They were more helpful spirits. So I guess it just depends on your interpretation. Once I started uh, putting the light... And, and defining the light around the um, edges of the dark, what is that, crevice inside the oak tree. I had so much fun doing that. It got me really excited. Like I said before I started this, I, I didn't know there was going to be a will-o'-the-wisp living in it. <laughs> the uh, photograph doesn't even have that dark, that dark portion in the bottom of the tree, so... I'm working with Prismacolor colored pencil. I was thinking about outlining it with my Micron pen in Sapia, which I don't know if you watched my previous videos, but I love my, my Micron pens and I love that pen too. The uh, Sapia has just a nice touch to it, but um, it needed something just a little bit softer for this tree. I just wanted the atmosphere to not be too jarring so uh, I pulled out the colored pencils and I'm glad I did. I think it worked well with these. The only thing about Prismacolor pencils is that you have to sharpen them. Especially if you're outlining like this, you have to keep that tip sharp. And uh, as you can see, soon I sharpen them again and again and again. <laughs> Gotta get that sharp point. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can hear it outside, but the weather is warming up. Of course, as soon as you sharpen a Prismacolor that sharp, it's gonna break. The point often breaks, which is why a lot of artists do not like Prismacolors. They are much stronger maybe better pencils, but I have this huge set of Prismacolor pencils. 
And they're probably going to last me my lifetime because they're huge. They have every color. <laughs> they have every single color I'd ever want. <laughs> And uh, I don't use them very often. I don't use, I don't do many colored pencil pictures at all. I used to do them all the time. I went through a phase, but now I'm just using them for outlining or for highlighting my watercolors. So, <laughs> but yeah, the the tips like to break. But anyway, I don't know. Outside the window, you can hear the Carolina wrens are out there just chatting and chatting it up. So if you hear little birds. I didn't put that on there on purpose. They're just talking. I was trying to figure out how far to go with the texture. Um, again, Loish's video when she was talking about pulling away from realism and getting more into style and stylized form. She says it's a constant fight and struggle, and she's completely right. I totally agree with it. And I, it was just interesting to hear her verbally define what I'd been going through. That's what I love about other artists. I love listening to other artists and, and learning from them and knowing that I'm not alone. It's always good to have kindred spirits in the art world. Because they get you. They say things and you're like, oh yeah, totally. So I'm going to be trying some more stylized trees. This one's definitely stylized. Uh, to me, it's right on the border of cartoon and real. I like that. So thinking about doing a juniper. So I used to hang out in a juniper and read when I was younger. Maybe a magnolia. So here I've gone to a lighter gray, trying to get those back branches in there without detracting too much from that, from the forward parts of the tree. That first initial wash I put down was just to create that misty feel in the background. And there's no leaves, so it's definitely a winter tree. I'm trying to decide how much branches to put. <laughs> but I do like it. I guess I just put enough until I feel good about it. This is a white Prismacolor pencil. It's not as white as I would have liked it to be. It's good for like, you know, right there where it's just wisps and, and highlight, l gentle highlights, but it's not as white as say a gel pen. Um, but again, there's something a little misty about this picture. So I was okay with that. I kind of left it not jarringly white. I'm gonna work some more in the future on glow. Some things that glow. I like that a lot. That's a very fun effect. I'll do a little bit of blue. Heighten the green. It was very mossy. Moss and oak trees, they go together. The ones in the south have a thing called resurrection fern. It grows all up and down the boughs of those trees and it's so beautiful. This one didn't have any on it, but... Here I'm adding my little mushroom friends. 
living on the bottom. All those little tree roots. They had to have some mushrooms. <laughs> gotta sign it it's funny I still sign mine with the date the year date and of course as soon as I signed it oh let me add some more to it I never sign it hardly ever sign something and then I'm done <laughs> I just learned early on to go ahead and sign something <laughs> I have so many paintings and drawings that are not finished in my head I have one on my easel right now I drew it a long time ago and started painting it, never finished it, put it back on my easel recently, thinking about at least finishing it. But anyway, there's the finished product, and thank you so much for coming along. I really appreciate it. Subscribe if you like it and want to see more coming down, because there'll be more. And take care. Love and light. Bye-bye.